but um, in terms of the spreading of the virus, all right, if we assume, if we take the hypothesis that the spread was at the, the Rose Garden, there were about seven or eight individuals that contracted or tested positive for SARS-CoV-2. My understanding is um, three are on the left side in the front row or in the front section. There's like like five, there's like three, I think there's three, three rows for each section and it kind of goes back and there's a, there's a right and a left. Okay, so if you're the president and you're at the podium and you're looking at the crowd, on the left side there were three and on, and on the, uh, on the right side, there was three. On the left side, there were three. And then he contracted it. Now, um, Conway, uh, uh, Ann Conway, or Kelly Ann Conway, was on the right side when looking at the crowd from the podium. And she was behind uh, Melania. Now, if you look at the ones on the left, all right, the ones that contracted it were not sitting together. They were many people apart. The ones on the right, when looking at the crowd from the podium, they were a little bit more clustered together. Kelly, uh, uh, Kelly Ann Conway was right behind Melania, and then I think there was someone, one person away from Kelly. Now, Kellyanne. So that was more clustered on the right side. Now, the seats were closer together than you would, you would think was prudent. All right. Um, and if looking at the pictures again, I probably would have had about 30% less capacity in the Rose Garden. I think it was a little too packed, actually. Um, some people, few, were wearing masks. Many did not. So those are the facts. Now, if someone was sick, now you got to remember, everyone was tested to be at that, at that Rose Garden. So, so what's the probability of six people Okay, not including the president, six people that happen to test negative, but really are positive. Low. What's the probability of one person having it and then being able to spread it to these individuals when you look at where they were sitting? Now, they did probably co-mingle when they went inside after the event, which I don't think was prudent. I think that was a dumb idea. But it just so happens that it's only people in the front row. No one in the back. No one in the center that were sick. These are only front row people. That I find odd. And then my understanding is Hicks was not at the Rose Garden and she contracted it. So George is thinking that it happened in Ohio. But Kellyanne Conway, wasn't. I, my understanding was she wasn't at Ohio. So she must have contracted it from someone else that would have been in contact with Hicks. And for it to spread like this in only the front row and not everyone in the back co-mingling after, you know, in, indoors, it seems odd to me. So I still have the thought that there was a purpose, purposeful release of a virus in the Rose Garden and or in Ohio to try to weaken the president's candidacy, his, his campaign. But either way, if he was infected with a USA CCP virus, and the USA part is a deep state, component. If he was infected, 
I take the stand, the stance that this is a, a assassination attempt on, on Trump's life and that the people that are involved in making this virus and releasing this virus when caught should be prosecuted and then tried for treason. And, you know, if found guilty, executed. Up on uh, screen right now, this is uh, number 12. This is uh, the White House Rose Garden event last Saturday, a week ago, where the president announced his nomination of Judge Barrett for the Supreme Court to replace uh, the deceased Justice uh, Ruth, Bader Ruth Bader Ginsburg. So um, that, this appears to be the event where the coronavirus was spread to a number of people. And on the right side, the first four or five rows seem to be um, ground zero. Right. Now, why that group has it more than anybody else? Now, it may be that we just we haven't seen the reports yet of the other people, but definitely on that right side, the first five rows, there are a lot of people who have tested positive. And you could say that one person in that group was infected and spread it to everybody else. You could say the president sneezed and blew particles all the way over there on the right side. Or if you really wanted to be um, conspiratorial, you could say that it was released on the right side of the Rose Garden. Perhaps the seating had been pre-treated. Perhaps there was an aerosol uh, discreetly released. I am not ruling out sabotage and an attempted assassination of the president and top leaders. You cannot rule it out. Absolutely, Rick. I mean, look at other times where people have gotten together in mass groups, mobs even. Have there been mass outbreaks of coronavirus? I mean, just getting together doesn't necessarily mean yeah. you're going to get infected or yeah. infect others. Something very interesting about that event, something very special. This was the nomination of uh, the replacing justice. Mm -hmm. Remember, they, they saw Ruth Bader Ginsburg as some kind of angel uh, for the left. She was one of the biggest advocates of abortion. How many children died because of her support for this? But the left saw the, uh, the Republican Party's push to replace yes. her as a slight, more than that, a sin even against them. Well, Why wouldn't they attack this event? The left, the, the political left, the news media, the, the never Trumpers and so forth, They've spent the last four years calling for Donald Trump's death. Yes. Literal beheading. Yes. You know, Kathy uh, Griffin. They, they want him to die. They have threatened to kill him. Why is it then not conceivable that somebody in the press corps became a, a kamikaze uh, a COVID kamikaze. Yes, a COVID kamikaze uh, warrior and, and said, uh, I am going to, t they think he's Hitler. All right, how do we know that somebody in the political left has not decided I'm going to go down in the history books as the man who killed Hitler? And something else I'd like for our audience to consider along the same line. Can we put the White House picture back up on the screen? All right, so there were 180 people at this particular event. So far, as of this Godcast tonight, 10 people out of that crowd have been confirmed positive for coronavirus. And most of them in the right side in yes. the first five rows. And uh, so now keep that in mind. Now, right now, the infection rate for COVID is less than 1% nationally, right? In that crowd, Rick, it's 5%. That gives me but in pause. The, but what is it in the first five rows? In the rows? first five rows on the right side, I, it's I, there are, I, Maybe I think. Maybe 25%? Yes, probably. And so it's significant in that the, on the right side of the screen there, right behind uh, the, uh, the Barrett family is on the front row there. Okay, G lovely family. But the next four rows back there are basically the evangelical contingent. 
Um, some of them were at the uh, uh, prayer rally that was going on in D.C. at the time. Franklin Graham. Yeah, Franklin Graham's in that crowd. Robert Morris is there. Tony Perkins is in that uh, is in those rows. Uh, you know, uh, Jensen Franklin sure. is sitting there as well. Uh, a number of people that were not only at this event but were also at the prayer rally event. But suffice it to say that it it begs the question. All right, for that whole crowd. 5% and in that one small section, 20 to 25%, that makes me question things a great deal. This is a picture of those uh, first four rows there. So within this picture here. There's Franklin Graham in the center. Right, right in the center there. To his, uh, the rear, uh, to his left in the back in the blue jacket, that's, that's uh, Pastor Robert Morris. And There's on, Jensen Franklin directly behind it. Next to uh, Robert Morris on the other side, that's uh, Pastor Andrew Brunson, who was in Turkey. Uh, in Turkey. You see Paula White in the red dress there, Kelly uh, Ann Conway, who has been confirmed with coronavirus, uh, in the white dress. And so uh, within this particular cross section here, you have about five people that Which have Which is really close to Judge Barrett. Yes, yeah. Judge Barrett's on the front row there. Maybe they were trying so, to kill Judge Barrett. Melania Trump right there. Uh, have you thought about that? Maybe, they're, maybe the attempt was to kill Judge Barrett. So the, the question is... Is uh, anybody in the FBI, anybody at the FBI at work today, anybody considering the possibility that there was an attempted assassination on Judge Barrett? That someone actually carried out one of the hundreds of death threats which were made against her and the Trump administration after they announced they were going to rush through a Supreme Court justice. I guess I've seen too many James Bond movies. So we could make the argument on one side that there's carelessness, but when you start looking at where the national average for infections less than 1%, and within a particular crowd it's 5%, and within a smaller segment of that crowd it's 20 to 25%, and I can't help but think, Rick, that over the next several days, we're going to get reports of dozens of people out of that uh, crowd of nearly 200 people that are going to test positive for coronavirus. Um, I, I just watch what happens here. And we're still getting reports. Yes. It. Well, uh, number 13, this is a New York Times reporter, Michael Shear, tests positive for coronavirus. Uh, we have this one up here. Uh, this is number... uh, it's a soundbite. Oh, actually, it's a right? soundbite. I'm sorry. OK, so we'll, we'll, we'll watch it. Here we go. It's now, you know, 10 days, 11 days, whatever, since I th think that I was probably infected uh, on, on, the, on that Saturday. Um, I've not been contacted by the White House. Nobody from the White House has said uh, boo uh, and, and asked anything about where I was or who I, who I talked to or, uh, or, or who else I might have infected. And so I think that that just shows you that they're not, uh, you know, they're not taking it seriously, at least as it pertains to themselves. That's a big deal, Michael. Talk about that some more. Uh, first of all, you think maybe you were infected Saturday night, um, by whom it's unclear, right? But you did go on right. Air Force One. The president came back and spoke to reporters off the record. So if he was infectious, it's not impossible. And was he wearing a mask when he spoke to you? He was not. He was not wearing a mask, and he spoke to us for about 10 minutes off the record. Um, look, it's it's hard to know, right, if he had just been infected himself that day. The medical experts, mm -hmm. I think, that you guys have been playing would suggest that he probably right. wasn't very infective himself at that point. Um, I was also at the White House earlier that day, not in the Rose Garden for the event, but uh, when you fly on Air Force One, the White House mm -hmm. requires that you take a COVID test earlier in the day. Um, which I did. So I was at, at the White House campus. It's possible I ran into somebody else there who was infected. But, um, but, it's, but that was the last time I was at the White House and last time really I was out and about. So it's, it's pretty clear, I think, somewhere along that course of that day was where I got infected. Just, um, well, I still gone. maintain the virus is real, but the response is fake. But if the virus is real, you know, and I believe that it is, someone with evil intent could have created a lot of havoc knowing that this event was going to take place, knowing that there, there were going to be key leaders on the right at that event. For me, Rick, it makes more sense that this was an operation of sabotage. But we have to also weigh as well, you know, we can't be careless because we know that there's an attempt at sabotage. Why, why do heads of state have uh, food testers? Because people try to kill them. <laughs> like somebody in the kitchen. Right. And so, you know, 
I know a lot of viewers and listeners are going back. Why, why do you guys hate Trump? We're, we don't no, hate him. We don't tell. hate the president. And we're not just saying the Trump administration should be careless. This reporter, I mean, this reporter came to this conclusion that he was somehow infected. Isn't it possible that he was the infectee? I mean, he's saying he flew on Air Force One. He was at the SCOTUS event. He was there all day Saturday. And yeah, he, 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 could have been, he could have been the, the super spreader. That's right. We, we don't know. That's just it. We don't know. But well, we I, do know. I we, tend to think, Doc, that it, either somebody went there with the intention of being uh, the, the uh, COVID kamikaze martyr to get kill Trump, kill Judge Barrett, or a, a more um, subtle attempt was made at releasing an aerosol or, you know, saturating the chairs, doing something in that one section where people, where there's a major outbreak, a cluster in those first four or five rows. Think about the, the, the hate on the left. I mean, just, it's not hate, it's not hate like, well, I, you know, I hate uh, sweet pickles. No, this is hate like, you know, I want you dead hate. Yes. That, well, that's they the, say that's it the every driving day. passion and, and, and on someone, the left. Someone had just mailed rice in. Remember That's this. right. Only about two weeks ago now, someone had mailed Bryson to, uh, tried to at least attempt to mail this to the White House. And it was talked about at the time on Twitter, on social media. Well, why didn't they send coronavirus? Why didn't they send something infected? It just takes one person who is infected to cough in that area. But would China do it? They have a strategic uh, reason to do it. Well, okay. Did, I, I, th that's a great question. Or did not the West accuse Russia of using uh, Novichuk. Novichuk against a, a, a man? In yeah, Great well, Britain? Well, you got the Scripples. The Scripples. Remember the, the, the Scripples, the Navalny, right. The and, then, and then here recently, Navalny, the Russian opposition. All right, so if I'm supposed to believe the, the Western in narrative, right. that the Russians, they do it. the Russians brought in agents with Novichok. Put it on a perfume bottle. Yes. And they then, picked it then up. Then why and, can't I also believe that China brought coronavirus into the Rose Garden? They have motive. They have opportunity. They have intent. Right. Yes. So 